Welcome everybody. I would like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we stand to their elders past, present and emerging. Each year in June and July, Fed Square, Melbourne's gathering place and civic and cultural heart, comes alive with a celebration of our ethos of being anything but square. We come alive in a kaleidoscope of sensory art, food and entertainment experiences, showcasing the vibrancy and uniqueness of our iconic Melbourne destination. And this year, we are thrilled to be featuring an impressive, large-scale, immersive art installation called The Knot by world-renowned French artist Cyril Lancelin. This will light up the chilly winter nights throughout winter. This is the first installation by Cyril ever to be exhibited in Melbourne. The knot is based on a knitting node or trefoil knot with several nodes juxtaposed and connected by a continuous line. The immersive installation is designed to both fill a space and divide that space at the same time, becoming a maze of passages and invites people to bend down, to step over and to get involved. A beautiful, distinctive pink colour, the knot will clearly stand out from its surrounds at all times, but in the evening it will also be illuminated for extra impact. In Cyril Lancelin's sculpture, the public is part of the work. His artworks are experiential, and the interactive moves from visitors become part of the installation. We are incredibly excited to be sharing this immersive work with Melbourne and cannot wait to welcome visitors from all across the state to Fed Square to experience this beautiful artwork firsthand. With that, I am very, very excited to be introducing to you the wonderful artist behind this great work of art, Cyril Lancelin. And we are also grateful to welcome our two interview moderators, Mr. Ted Gott, Senior Curator of the NGV, and Ms. Miriam Boisbouvier-Boily, the Honorary Council General of France in Melbourne. Bonsoir. Welcome, Cyril. It's really nice to see you on the screen. Could you please tell us a little bit about yourself and your life in Lyon? Bonsoir, Miriam. Uh, bonsoir, uh, tout le monde. Uh, bonsoir, Ted. Uh, um, I'm living in, uh, in Lyon, it's a, um, a big city um, near um, the Mediterranean Sea on the mountain. Um, what I like about this city is uh, there's two rivers uh, going through, so you are uh, almost in the city and in, in the nature. So I'm, I'm very happy to, to live there. So you've been uh, an architect, if I understand correctly, for a number of years and uh, then you switched to creative uh, work and you opened your own uh, creative workshop. How did that happen? Uh, yes, I was always interested in, in art. Actually, sometimes um, I say uh, artists read uh, architecture book and architects they, they read uh, art books. Uh, there's strong connection between both uh, fields. And for me, um, um, when I was living in the USA, um, I, I went to the Najat Foundation in Marfa, in Texas. And I was astonished by the work. And when I came back to, uh, to my office, I, I really wanted to, to move forward to a more artistic way. Well, I think that answers my question. How, how did you become an artist? <laughs> so uh, let's, oh, go, let's go straight um, to the knot sort of. Or, or yeah, yes, uh, I, I became an artist um, uh, because um, uh, as an architect, I was studying a lot of um, art and uh, things like this. And uh, I, I thought I wanted to, to, to go back to, to the beginning, you know, when, uh, when you, the, the, the idea starts, uh, you first start to, to think about a project in, in architecture. So that's why architects love to, to look at uh, art books because they find ideas in those art books and they, they find um, shapes, uh, forms, um, all, all those kind of ideas. Mm. Um, and as an architect, I, I was working a lot of uh, on a lot of competition and design uh, goes very fast. So I spent a lot of time doing models or uh, with 3D software, like playing around with cubes and all those kind of uh, shapes. Um, and as you know, in most of the country uh, now, uh, there is a lot of art, uh, public art in connected to uh, architecture. You have to do um, sometimes um, 
uh, sculptures inside the lobbies of hotel or lobbies of uh, offices. So we work a lot with artists as architect. Um, so it was so connected that sometimes artists were sitting next to us and we were working with them and moving the building to fit their sculpture and the sculpture was fitting the building too. So the, the, the passage from one to the other one was really easy actually. Great. Let's talk about the work that you're showing here in Melbourne, the knot. What medium did you choose to make this work and why that medium and also why did you choose the color pink? Um, so th this artwork, when I started to, um, to design it, uh, I really designed it as um, in 3D. So I was drawing on the computer. It was actually kind of difficult because uh, uh, to make a continuous line never crossing it, uh, itself, uh, it took me a, a lot of time. And um, uh, I think it will, I wanted to, to make it immersive that for people to, to go inside because it was a, a maze. So the, the best way to do a very large scale um, artwork was to use inflatable. And um, so inflatable was a, a, a great medium. And, and then um, I decided to, to use pink color because uh, I spent a lot of time uh, um, studying images and colors. And I noticed the pink is one of the colors we stand out the most in a city or in a um, nature environment. Because if you use blue, it will uh, be too much uh, with the sky. Uh, if you use green, then if you have trees, then uh, it, it's in competition. And black or white, uh, cities have a lot of black. So, so pink actually was, um, when I did the, the try in pink, it was uh, obvious. It was the, the, the color I had to choose. Is this how you get your inspiration from uh, looking at the cities or how do you get your inspiration? Yeah, yes, of course, uh, I love to work in the cities, but um, every day um, I spend a lot of time on my computer drawing uh, things, drawing shapes, uh, playing around with um, cubes and stuff. And something before when I was a student, I was doing model, but now with computers, it's easier. You, you, you can do a lot of um, shapes and move around. Uh, now with virtual headset, for example, VR, you can even go inside, put your headset on your head and move things around. So it's, uh, uh, it's a practice every day uh, I, I do this and that's how I, I get some ideas. Mm. Cyril, can you tell us about some of your other projects worldwide? I'm, I'm thinking of things like your marvelous flamingo ring that you uh, created in uh, Dubai in 2019 or, or your magical mix installation which was uh, created using interlocked melons and pumpkins? Uh, yes, um, so I wanted, uh, uh, I always start um, to, to, to create an immersive space um, as a, more as an architect, but um, I wanted to connect um, architecture experience with uh, pop culture. So that's why uh, for the Flamingo Ring in Dubai, um, I thought the space uh, would be more fun if it, it was using uh, flamingos because it's, it's a strong graphic coming from my everyday life. Um, so you could see it uh, with uh, as the three huge stories uh, put next to each other, three big circles next to each other and making a space because in the space between you enter and, and Taurus shape is in, interesting because uh, you see um, you see the void, the, the empty, but you see the full as well. So, um, and adding the, the head of the flamingo uh, was um, making it more alive as well. It's always this question about being figurative or um, uh, ab abstract. Um, so that, that's why I, I thought it was interesting to connect both. And for, it was kind of the same idea for mix, even if it looks totally different. Um, one of my first work was to design a house that I call a house hill, and I use um, to make walls. I use cubes, spheres, and a cylinder, and with a, a software I, I call this parametric. And in the wall, I say, okay, I want twenty percent of cube, twenty percent of uh, pyramid, twenty percent of cylinders. So it makes me random things with different. Uh, and I thought it would be nice to, um, to move forward and to use, instead of cube, to use uh, a shape that I like. 
And melons, watermelons, pumpkins are very interesting when you look at them because uh, the skin and because of their shape. And that's why they have been used a lot uh, in the pop culture as well. So I replaced those cubes and uh, those pyramids and the cylinders by those uh, melons and pumpkins. And it's a very, I was, by the way, very, very interesting at the big, um, at the first um, drawing. So um, just right now, it's, uh, there's a small part of it, which was built in, in Beijing at um, uh, Ioma Art Center. And um, I'm very happy with this. Thank you. Now, some of your works are very architectural in, in feel, which is not surprising given your background. Can you tell us about some of the influences you've drawn from various types of world architecture? Yes, um, when I was studying architecture and when I was working, uh, one of the things that was most interesting for me was a uh, Japanese uh, architecture and Japanese uh, architect. Um, uh, maybe because um, in Japan, uh, they don't have a lot of space. Uh, when they design house, they were following rules. Like for example, you have a house called a stair house, or the uh, uh, one window house. So they put the rules at the beginning. So stair house, everything will be uh, around the stair. And one window is a huge window. And they go to, um, it's almost like um, very um, uh, strict. They don't. They follow their rules and they do something. So they, they come up with a design completely different. Um, sometimes when you when you do architecture, you're 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 too much influenced by what you have seen around. So you say, okay, my plan is like this. I put my windows here in Japan. They, they are working completely different. They they work more like a like a maybe a piece of art or something. So um, that's something I always loved when I, when I was uh, starting architecture. And I think uh, I always um, try to do the same. I, I put the rules before I, I design a new artwork. Um, I say, okay, I'm gonna do something immersive, which I'm gonna make a volume, but at the same time with space inside. And then I have to follow these rules. Um, and Cyril, how did you come to Fed Square? How did that connection happen? Um, well, Fed Square is very interesting because uh, um, when I started to, um, when I just finished my uh, architecture studies in uh, 1999, um, Fedscare was a big, big thing because uh, it was a, a very famous building um, de um, of deconstructivism, and uh, it used uh, the facade used a fractal, and so uh, it was very uh, for me. Uh, uh, I remember looking at it in, in art, in architecture magazines, and. So to get the chance to, to bring Knut here, it was really cool because Knut is um, the kids of computer as well, you know, like Fractal. So uh, I think it would be, it would be a perfect connection uh, between the both uh, our project. Oh, we certainly are exciting, excited about it. Now you were supposed to be here for the launch, but because of the COVID restriction, you are, you are not. Um, I don't think you have been to Australia before. What were you looking for forward to when you were supposed to be here? Well, um, I was so excited to come to Australia, actually. Yeah, and, uh, it would have been my first time. So I am very disappointed because, <laughs> of, uh, because of this COVID situation. Um, but um, I think it will, will be for the future. I will, I will come at another time. Um, but. Um, um, because of this pandemic, I think we, we've done many progress on the um, virtual things, on the connection. Uh, we find other way to communicate together, and, and I think it's important, and it, it will help us for, for our future, I think. And of course, the notch was due to be installed here last year in 2020, but the project had to be delayed by a year. Uh, how has COVID affected your work overall? Mm. Um, yes, uh, it was supposed to be last year. Um, for for co COVID, it was uh, uh, difficult because uh, I, I think it's like um, when I design art, uh, I, I followed, I put the rules and I follow those rules. But the, the rules of uh, not being able to be free and to meet your friends, it's something I never expected. Um, not only me, probably a lot of people. Um, I see, uh, I speak to, with a lot of other artists and they are completely lost as well because all the things, 
The only things we knew for sure, it's this, this horse that we can connect, we can uh, walk, we can travel. And so it's, it's mixing everything. Um, so I, I designed um, uh, a small artwork, it was called Pyramid Pillows. It was a, a pyramid made of pillows that everybody could uh, produce in, in his own house. It was like a, a way to say, um, okay, um, we can't go, we can't leave home, so I'm gonna do art in my house. So it was kind of um, a, a way to escape this uh, very uh, uh, difficult uh, COVID time. Um, but as I, I was saying a little bit, um, we have to see the positive things. I, I think it's going to change the world in, in, in a good way after, because uh, we all know our freedom is uh, important for us. Our, um, our families and friends are important. And so we will uh, find ways to, to connect and to make it easier to connect uh, each other. Now, the knot was originally shown in um, Hangzhou in China in 2017, but it's going to be quite different here in Melbourne because it will be internally lit here. So how do you um, think that, that this internal lighting will change the experience for Australian audiences? Yes, and um, in Hangzhou, the, the knot was in uh, indoor so you couldn't um, you, you see the maze effect, but you couldn't see the, the artwork from far and from uh, uh, from um, connected to the city, for example. And um, yeah, you didn't see the impact of the volume as well. And as I, as I was saying too, um, uh, there's a Fed Square building which is uh, like very amazing with all those fractal and the amazing facade. So I think it it would be something totally different. And um, the other point you, you're saying is uh, the light, of course, at night time, because then it will uh, it will inverse um, the the knot at, at night time. The light will come from the not from the place where you go, but from the the structure itself. Uh, so I'm pretty excited uh, to see this. Um, as as we said before, uh, it's not only the artwork. What's um, nice about this artwork is to see the reaction of the public. How the people people go inside. Uh, actually, it's nice to experience it, but it's nice to, stay, to step uh, away and look other people go inside. That's really exciting. And so what else are you looking forward for the year to come or the years to come? What are your projects that you're working on? Well, I, I'm working um, on a lot of uh, projects because a um, lot of projects have been postponed from last year. So um, in a few days, I'm going to Lisbon in Portugal to present a, a new a new artwork. Um, and uh, I'm excited as well. I, I have a new uh, big immersive artwork made of um, stainless steel sphere that will be presented in, in Paris this summer uh, next to the um, Paris La Défense, the dis uh, financial district. So it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty fun. And, um, and I'm working also on another project that I like a lot. Uh, it's a project in Sao Paulo in Brazil um, with a Brazilian filmmaker. It's um, an artwork which will be related to the COVID uh, uh, situation, and especially in Brazil where um, things are pretty tough for them. So uh, I'm excited to work on this project. You're a very busy man. Yes, <laughs> and we are looking forward to the uh, frontiers to reopen so that we can go and see your work. Absolutely. Yes, me too. And uh, I can't wait for the frontiers to open and to come to visit Australia because uh, um, well, we, I think we all can't wait to, 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 to travel again. Yes, that's for sure. Thank you very much, Cyril. Thank you. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you, Ted. Thank you so much. And. Um, I hope you, you will enjoy the artwork and... Uh... No doubt. Yes, I know <laughs> we will. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much.